Hi everybody. So today I'm going to demonstrate something that has been a problem for me for some time. The concurrent operation of my HPIB adapter and another HPIB peripheral, in our case a printer. So let's power up the printer and the HP 86. Let me do a cat. And here we see a normal catalog. Now what I will do is I'm going to select the printer. Uh, so printer is uh, 701 80 and then I'm going to uh, specify print all print all so anything I print now on the screen is gonna go to the printer so if I say display hi there there we see on the printer so let me zoom in to the printer so now I'm going to do a cat again and we see that the printer itself now is printing a copy as the information is coming from the disk the uh, the printer is copying them. Now you might say what is the big deal? Well the big deal is that there is no disk drive in the system instead we have this Arduino device um, which is connected via this ribbon cable to the HPIB and although it's a little bit difficult to see uh, this this pin here, this jumper plug, let me zoom in, this jumper plug there uh, identifies it as uh, device uh, number two on the bus. So it doesn't necessarily need to be always on the same uh, HPIB address, it's not hardwired which was the problem with the previous version of this uh, device and although there is uh, space uh, for a flash for, for an SD card on this board I'm using the Ethernet so the Ethernet is where this device is getting the files so let's uh, look a little bit at the interface uh, between the HP uh, 86 and the uh, Arduino uh, HPIB adapter. So here we are on the PC end. <coughs> it is actually a Mac OS X but the software can run on, on Linux and OpenBSD and other Unix systems. Uh, the top window here we see the program running. This is, this is the server, the LIF server. Uh, it is a network application uh, like a web server it waits for the uh, HPIB Arduino adapter to connect to it and once it uh, it is connected it can serve uh, block level requests from a bunch of uh, floppy uh, virtual floppy disks uh, that are mounted so the 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 uh, the server is uh, can be configured using another utility called lifconf lift configure, where we can use it to mount and mount uh, floppies and look at the status. So the let's go here and run a command to look, for example, at the status of the server, and we can see that. Uh, it's mounting one floppy, the HP87 training pack, 
uh, it's a 9121 emulation and the other three drives are unmounted so let's go and mount a drive so let's mount an empty uh, volume so that's that's an empty and we can we are mounting it right read right um, and we can see here that it is mounted on unit one which is what we specified here it's writable this is the file and again the, the default emulation is the 9121 uh, the emulation essentially determines what is the geometry of the disk uh, so if uh, because the HP 86 the mass storage ROM is making the requests as a, a, a head a truck and a uh, and a sector so we need to convert that to an offset in the file and our default conversion is the 9121 uh, floppy drive uh, which is a fairly common uh, format so here we have the training pack on unit 0 and an empty uh, leaf uh, diskette on unit 1. So let's go back to the, 80, to the 86. So if you remember I had uh, set my disk drive to be at address 2. So now we can look at the uh, definition of the, of the drive. Uh, this is the controller, this is the unit, this is the device drive number, and this is the unit number. So this is the first floppy. And this is going to give us the same printout as previously. It's the training pack. So now let's go and look at the other drive. So cut. So this is the empty drive and it's called VP1. So let's copy a file from unit 0 to unit 1 and we're going to use the uh, the volume names to do that. Uh, so we say copy. Let's copy let's say uh, the money program you can't see it but trust me money dot well the first volume is called basic so money dot basic two uh, let's call it x1 dot vp1 although I don't actually need to specify this because vp1 is my currently selected volume so uh, the copy operation is in progress and let's look at uh, volume 1, X1. Uh, to give you an idea of the speed or lack of, uh, I'm going to copy the entire basic floppy to, to, to the blank uh, floppy. So let me uh, purge x1 so now you will see that uh, a blank uh, file has been left behind so um, let's copy the entire uh, basic uh, training disk to um, to the VP1 um, um, floppy. So it's the same as this command but no file names. So copy dot basic to dot VP1. And I'll move over to the to the other display so you will see the files being transferred. So here we see all the blocks being read from one uh, leaf 
uh, and copied to the other leaf volume. And the, uh, the path taken is that the, um, the controller, the HPIB adapter, and I will show it to you. So let me turn off the light so you can see the, the lights blinking. Uh, so essentially what happens is that uh, the HP86 is asking for a block, is, is starting to copy a file, so it's asking for a block from, from its HPIB disk drive and the request comes here over the Ethernet to the uh, laptop. The, the Lyft server gets the request over TCP. Um, it, all, it gets the block from the, um, from the uh, Unix file. It then sends it to the Arduino over the Ethernet and then the Arduino over the HPIB sends it to the 86. Now the 86 is going to write it to the other unit it's going to send it back down the bus to the Arduino over the Ethernet to the Lyft server program and then the Lyft server program is, is going to write it at the appropriate offset on the file on the uh, on the empty Lyft volume uh, which is mounted on unit 1 and then the acknowledgement is going to go back to the 86 and then the 86 is going to pick the next block and so on and so forth so, as you can see, the, uh, the files are being copied slowly and we can see that, um, actually you can't see it, but um, as these uh, offsets roll by, uh, it essentially goes back to the, for every file, it goes back to the directory to get its, uh, inf the, the file information and then copies the blocks corresponding to the file and then goes back to the other, to the directory on unit 1 to save the information and so on. And now we see that it has finished finally copying. So let's go back to our HP86 and do a cat. So this is VP1. You can see it scrolling off the screen. And these are all the files on the uh, unit 0 copied to unit 1. Now uh, I'm going to raise the camera so you will see that the first file copied is the money file. So it's right there. So if we want to get rid of all the files on this volume, we just have to say purge money, which is the first file, and then we use the comma zero option. Now, you won't see it now, but uh, on the laptop we had a burst of uh, updates for the directory blocks, and now if we do a cat, we'll see that it's empty. 